We just got done learning about ionic bonding, which involved a metal and a nonmetal transferring electrons, creating ions. The metal would often transfer the electron to the nonmetal, which would take the electron. Positive ion for the metal, negative ion for the nonmetal. The second major type of atomic bonding is going to be called covalent bonds. Uh, these bonds will occur when atoms, sh um, two or more atoms share electrons, as opposed to ionic bonding in which uh, a complete transfer of electron occurs. Covalent bonding occurs when two or more elements share electrons. Covalent bonding also occurs because the atoms in the compound have a similar tendency for electrons. Generally, they both want to gain the electrons. This most commonly occurs when you have two nonmetals bonding together. Because they both want to gain electrons, the elements involved will often just share in an effort to fulfill their valence shells. A good example of this is between two hydrogen atoms. Both hydrogen atoms have one valence. They each want one more electron to fulfill their first electron orbital ring. They both will hold on to that electron because if they give it away, they won't have any electrons available. So they're going to need to share their electrons. A, here's a good a, uh, animation that shows what I'm talking about. Atoms of hydrogen have one valence electron in their first energy shell. Since the capacity of the shell is to hold two, each hydrogen atom will want to pick up a second electron. In an effort to pick up a second electron, the atoms will often find a nearby hydrogen to react with, form the compound H2, which is hydrogen gas. And because they're equally matched and pulling on the electrons equally, they're going to need to share. This will be a covalent bond. In this particular case, it's called a diatomic molecule because it, in this particular case, it involves the same element. Another analogy I have was, is with the dogs dog and bone. Notice in the covalent bond we have dogs of equal strength. Two or more dogs are going to be um, equally attracted to the bones which are representing the electrons. Since the dogs are identical then the dogs will share the bones evenly. Since one dog does not have more of the bone than the other the charge is going to be evenly distributed about amongst both dogs. The molecule is considered um, nonpolar, and I'll explain what that means in a little bit, um, meaning one side doesn't have a better advantage than the other. They're both equally sh sharing the electrons together. Unlike ionic bonds, covalent bonds are going to exist as true molecules. Because electrons are shared in covalent bonds, no full ionic charges are going to be formed because we're not fully transferring the electron. We're not losing it or gaining a new one. Thus, covalent bonds are not going to be as strongly attracted to one another. And they're going to move around more freely and tend to exist as liquids or gases at room temp. For every pair of electrons shared between two atoms, a single covalent bond forms. For example, hydrogen has one valence and fluorine has seven. Fluorine wants one more electron, but hydrogen won't give it to him. Hydrogen wants one more to have two in its valence, but fluorine won't give it to him. So they're going to have to share. Notice the way that this diagram is drawn with both valences overlapping. And notice that they only drew the valence electrons of this molecule. The formula for this molecule would be HF because it's one-on-one -on -one sharing of electrons. This is another molecule that involves single bonds. We're going to have a single bond on each side of the oxygen where the um, separate hydrogen atoms are. Again, hydrogen wants one more to be happy, uh, so it's going to want to take one from oxygen, likewise for the other hydrogen atom. Oxygen doesn't want to get rid of any of its electrons, and if you notice it in its outer valence, it has six red electrons. Uh, it wants to rip off an electron from each of the hydrogens, but they won't give it to the, to the, the oxygen. So in turn, they're going to have to share. This will be an uneven type of sharing, because if you notice how oxygen is so much bigger than hydrogen, um, we have a little bit of an uneven sharing. It's kind of like tug-of-war, 
where one person is pulling a little harder, oxygen is that one pulling a little bit harder towards its nucleus, but hydrogens won't let go, but they almost lose their electrons. This is called a polar covalent bond. And we'll talk about this more in class and even do a, a lab experiment that will involve polar covalent bonds. The above, um, the above molecule, HF, is another polar, uh, polar covalent bond as well because it is uneven sharing. Uh, fluorine is a little bit of a bigger atom. It has a greater what's called electronegativity, which means the ability to take an electron. Uh, fluorine and oxygen will have a higher electronegativity than hydrogen. Uh, so they will pull on those electrons a little bit harder. So uneven sharing in these two pictures, which is called um, polar covalent as opposed to the two hydrogens you saw before those were evenly matched so that's just called um, a nonpolar covalent bond or just a covalent bond you'll hear me say in class there are other types of po um, covalent bonds some atoms can share multiple pairs of electrons forming multiple covalent bonds here's a double covalent bond where you see oxygen that has six it wants two more to be happy each one wants to gain two. They want to rip off two from their partner. The other, the other atom doesn't want to let those two electrons be released. So in turn, they have to share. Notice that the two valences are overlapping. So a lot of times I will draw a box around the shared electrons. And I'll show you um, some different ways to draw these out in class. Um, there's also triple bonds. Triple bonds will formed. E example would be nitrogen. Nitrogen has five in its valence. It wants three more to be happy. Likewise for the other nitrogen. Both nitrogens will not give up those three electrons, so they're going to have to share. Notice that if you look at one of the nitrogens and count all the electrons, including the three from the other side, it will reach eight in its valence, as well as um, the right-hand side if you count all the electrons in the valence, including the three or sorry, all six boxed and you'll get eight total. This is a triple bond and you see N with three bars and an N. That's the way you represent um, triple bonds. If you wanted a double bond with our oxygen example, it'd be O with two lines and an O. That would be oxygen gas and the triple bond would be nitrogen gas. When you see elements bonding to itself, the word is diatomic. These are diatomic molecules when you see two atoms of the same element bonding together. Examples of diatomic molecules will be hydrogen bonding to itself for hydrogen gas, oxygen bonding to itself, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, all the halogens bonding to themselves. It forms a number seven on the periodic table with the exception of hydrogen. Now there's different ways that we can rep, uh, draw these um, these molecules and compounds with uh, something that's called Lewis dot structures. They're a shorthand way to represent the valence electrons of an atom. They're kind of fun to draw. The structures are written as the element symbol surrounded by dots that represent the valence electrons, just the valence. The Lewis dot structures for the elements in the first two periods of the periodic table are shown in this diagram. Hydrogen has one valence, so it has one dot. Helium has two valence, so two dots. Lithium 1, beryllium 2, boron 3, carbon 4, nitrogen 5, oxygen 6, fluorine 7, and neon is 8. You can also represent Lewis dot structures um, showing bonding between atoms. The bonding electrons are going to be placed, the bonded electrons are going to be placed in the middle of the two atoms and can be rep represented by a pair of dots or um, a dash between uh, each element. Um, so for hydrogen gas, H2, you can represent it with the two dots in the middle or just the dash that represents that two dots are being shared. For O2, which is oxygen gas, you would do all your six around your oxygen symbol and you would basically share the electrons that are in the center. I kind of like the two bars a little bit more than the sharing of dots and I'll give you, again, I'll give you some examples in class. All right, go. We're sharing, we're sharing, we're sharing, we're sharing. Say thanks for watching. Thanks, thanks for watching. watching.